So I'm Mark Ketakowski. I'm the uh, Chief Science Officer and a President of Forever Labs. And what we do is we bank your stem cells. So we bank your mesenchymal stem cells we're after. These are stem cells that are found in your fat, your bone marrow. And uh, we cryopreserve them for later use. It's kind of like uh, if you're uh, familiar with core blood banking for, for children or if you're familiar with uh, egg banking or sperm banking, you can cryopreserve these cells. And so the reason why we do this uh, starts in about 2001. In 2001, I'd finished my uh, BS in physics, and I started working on my PhD in medical physics at a lab in the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. And it was a lab, it was a neurology research lab, and we were doing uh, stroke research. We are trying to improve the healing from stroke um, using mesenchymal stem cells, these MSCs. I'm just going to call them MSCs from here on out. And uh, this work started in 2001. Um, I, my advisor was a uh, guy, Dr. Michael Chop, amazing scientist, became a preeminent stroke research based, based on this work of our, 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 that his lab. And, and what we found is that the MSC, this, this kind of ubiquitous stem cell that you find in the fat, the perivascular space, and the bone marrow, it's a, like kind of a master coordinator of, of healing and inflammation and, and, and the, 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 the inflammatory process. And the, this is mainly through soluble factors that it produced. And so we found this worked and it helped animals recover from stroke. And then other people got kind of turned into this, tuned onto this. And there's been this, over the last kind of 20 years, there's been this massive kind of upsurge in the use of these mesenchymal stem cells to treat age-related disease because people have become to appreciate like kind of their therapeutic um, kind of potential. And there's actually, and, and, and we have now, we have some um, Japan, early onset Alzheimer's, uh, spinal cord injury. Uh, European Union has, I think, Crohn's disease, graft versus host disease. Canada, graft versus host disease for the immunoregulatory uh, effects. And so there's this, this growing you know, interest in the cell. And, and I know these cells more than most things, better than most things in my life, um, because I've spent so much time with them. And over the course of my kind of research career, I became kind of obsessed with not only the, the, the therapeutic potential of the cell, but how it's lost to age. And so what's really interesting is that we found that old mice didn't recover so well to stroke, and it wasn't just because they were old, but it was because the cells, the MSCs that we were giving were old. And so when we used young cells that were genetically matched, like syngenetic, and we put those in the old mice, they recovered much more readily. And so I was, I'm a physicist by training. I like to kind of think of things in a systems kind of way. And I was like, well, wait. So we have these cells in us, and they're kind of going to pot. And actually what we found is that the cells don't just lose their therapeutic potential, but they actually become a liability. So the soluble factors they produce um, no longer like just you know, go uh, turn off, but they actually start producing signals that are creating kind of mayhem. And I became kind of obsessed with that. And then in 2012, like I wasn't, I wasn't a longevity enthusiast. I didn't get into space by like, because I um, was like, you know, uh, I want to solve aging. I got into this because for kind of selfish reason. I was like, wait a minute, if they're declining, then your health's going to decline. So I wrote to the National Institute of Aging or a grant and to the NIH in 2012. And I said, what if we just didn't treat stroke and you know or injury? What if we just took these cells and then we like took young ones and put them in genetically match old animals? Would that improve their health span? Would that improve their lifespan? The study section said no, um, and uh, we're, I was kind of summarily dismissed. They weren't really interested in this, but um, in researching those grants, I found some people were thinking along similar lines, and particularly like there was a lab in, in Texas, and they were looking at osteoporosis and, I, I, and, and osteopenia, which turns to osteoporosis, the loss of bone density with age, and the MSCs contributed to bone building. And so they put young MSCs in older animals, and they found, oh wow, it slowed osteoporosis. Um, and they also found that the animals serendipitously, they found they live a little bit longer. And so this idea kind of like stuck with me and, and um, I became kind of obsessed with the aging of the MSC and it's, it's kind of conversion from like a benefit to a liability. And um, so fast forward like three more years, that was 2012, in 2015, um, I was working on a project with some, some entrepreneurial people, we were selling Bitcoin and um, I've always had a couple irons in the fire and uh, we were on a call, like the financial, uh, uh, you know, Crime Enforcement Network, they reached out to us and they said, you guys, you can keep selling Bitcoin, but you gotta be money transmitters in all the states you're selling, ever you're selling this. And I was with, we were at this like, oh, our startup's dead. And um, this talk about what you're gonna do next. And I was like, I know what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna bank my stem cells. Like, and I told my you know, co-founders why. I was like, this is why I wanna bank my stem cells. I was turning 40 and I think it's kind of like a midlife crisis. And, and they were, you know, uh, growing, you know, they were like approaching 42. So they're like, well, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. And we reached out to a orthopedic surgeon that we we're friends with. And he said, hey guys, I'm pulling bone marrow all the time. Like what we do is we take it out, we concentrate it and we inject it like at a site of injury or after a surgery. And this actually promotes healing. It works. Um, and there's a, there's like, I'm not the only one. They're doing this across the country. We're like, well, interesting. Okay. So we banked ourselves and then 
we, you know, opened up shop in Michigan, it's just at his clinic, and then we opened one in, in, in North Carolina at my buddy's, because my buddy's wife was at Duke, and we were, we were to that, and then um, we started people coming from San Fran to Michigan to bank their stem cells. And we're like, oh, well, we better open up a clinic in San Fran, so we did that, we're, you know, working with orthopedic surgeons, and, and um, you know, we started banking more and more people, and the next thing, we got a call from uh, Sam Altman, the uh, president of Y Combinator, the uh, you know, incubator here, and he said, hey, hey guys, let's meet. And so we talked to him, and he said, why are you doing this, and what do you, you know, and we told him about it, and he said, I think you guys should go into Y Combinator. So then we like kind of converted into like, you know, this like side project into a real startup. Um, we went through Y Combinator in summer of 17, and now we're in 12 states, um, we're banking people, not just from bone marrow, but also fat. We work with plastic surgeons. They, there's plenty of MSCs in fat, more than bone marrow, actually, by volume. And we're banking this. And the reason why is because I believe that this might be a tool in your toolkit for health maintenance. Um, to the degree that aging is irreversible, or at least even difficult to reverse, then having a pool of young biology might be beneficial. And, and also, it's an opportunity to, I think, bring other people in to this notion. So, like I said, there's been this increase in uh, development of clinical work using MSCs, you know, for treatment of age-related disease, heart disease, stroke, osteoporosis. But at the same time, we're b building a lifelong relationship with people, and the more that we can actually, if we can start to use the cells not just for health, you know, recovery, but actually health maintenance, we can start to tune people into that possibility. And so, like I said, I didn't like start this company though. I wanted to bank myself. Um, I'm a scientist, and so I've had the kind of a skunk works going on in the company. My goal is actually to make good on these cells, not just to bank them. While we were doing this, I, I was able to do that study that I proposed to NIA. Um, and like share this now, um, I, we haven't published this yet. We only have two mice left out of about 60. At Henry Ford, I contract my old lab. We did this study. We took you know 20 uh, mice that we treated with saline, 20 mice we treated with young cells, and then 20 mice we treated with their age match cells. And these mice were 82 weeks when they started this. So this was 2017 of October, October 2017. And, and what we found is when we did this, um, we extended the life expectancy of the mice that were treated with the young cells. So our data right now, and it's, it's like we have two mice left, so it's pretty much converge on this. We have um, the saline treated mice had an average uh, life expectancy of 122 weeks, and the uh, old cell treated, the age matched cell treated mice had a life expectancy of 122 weeks. Uh, the young cell treated mice have an average life expectancy of 128 weeks. So we moved it forward, the ball forward, but what's interesting, is so last, last week we had um, three mice left, and we had like a young and an old and a saline treated mouse. And then we lost a young, saline treated, a young treated mouse last week. And so we have a saline and we have, a, we have an old cell treated mouse left. And what we didn't do is extend their overall lifespan. Like we didn't extend how, like their, their maximum lifespan. We increased their, like, their life expectancy. And so we squared the curve. And it's interesting. So if you look at the, if you look at the curve, and I wish I had a slide of this, so you'll see the, the, the control mice that kind of die like this. And then the, cell, the animals are treated with old cells that kind of died like that. And then the, the cell, animals are treated with young cells, they died like this. They, had, they lived to this old age and then they just died really fast. And kind of my, and that, that's really cool to me because it, there's something there. Like, I think my theory right now that my, is that, so when these cells, like I said, when they get older, they become senescent, they become a liability. And by giving these cells like a stem cell, these animals a stem cell kind of um, enhancement stem cell, we, we, we actually increase their number of stem cells. So in the short term, they have like more MSCs, and this is great. They're burning twice as bright, but they don't burn as long because as they get older, they actually have a higher senescent burden than the control cells, and that becomes a liability. So um, I think it's an interesting thing that, and we're already you know, going back to work, there are things called senolytics where we can start to remove these cells, and so we can do a complete oil change, and just not pour new oil into the, into the car. Um, and then also, like, another opportunity that we're kind of taking advantage of in the, in the lab is when we take cells out, we, a lot of um, you know, things we can do for rejuvenation, we can do at a higher fidelity and, and at a lower cost and, uh, in vitro than instead of in vivo in the animal. And so we're kind of taking advantage of that, applying senolytics, can we remove some of the senescent cells that are already there? And one thing, this is like kind of my proudest thing in the last couple of years that we've done in the lab. So if you're familiar with mammalian cell culture, you basically, you take cells and you put them at five, you put them at 5% CO2 and you put them at 37 degrees centigrade and you give them the same nutrition and it's always the same. And if you know anybody that lives like that, like, that's not good. Um, so 
biology needs stressors. Like biology actually takes advantage of stressors. What can you do to like re to, 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 to to biologically, you know, re like kind of de-age yourself? You can exercise. We know exercise will give you like kind of a younger phenotype. And it's because it's because, and this is like, you know, if you want to know who's the smartest kid in the room for in, at math, like you give them a math test, you stress them, and you and that that allows a selection process. And biology does the same kind of thing. And so it's kind of ludicrous that we we expand cells and we we at like this kind of constant temperature. So what we've done is we created like an incubator that we couldn't find this off the shelf. So we actually created um, an incubator that where we can program in sequences of like temperature variation, atmospheric variations, and so we put the the, the them through periodic stress. Um, or at least periodic changes, and um, just on a basal level, the cells expand much much better. We have far less senescence, like far less artificial aging as we grow them. But also, what's really interesting is when we're applying some of the therapies, some of the therapeutic interventions that we're working on, um, we find kind of outsized effects on the cells when they're actually able to like. So I think um, that's kind of one of the cool thing opportunities we have. So you know, anyway, as a as a founder though, where the rubber meets the road, we're banking people. Um, We've kind of like branched out of you know the longevity community. Uh, we're banking people across the, the country that are just kind of interested in their health. Um, we recently started banking a lot of athletes, and athletes are interesting. Um, I, I'm, I'm learning about sports and meeting like we're banking like um, some NBA player. Or this be a little, we'll have some like PR about and, like quarterback and stuff. And, like, what's interesting is like uh, the sports like athletes are like they're biohackers. They've been biohackers for a while, and they're really aggressive about like what they do to like stay in the game. Um, and there's actually, and so like what we do resonates pretty quick with them, and um, we're, that was a kind of interesting thing on the, the end. So I guess I'm, I'm getting close to like you know how much time I want to talk, but the I would just make a couple comments like on the space in general. Like one is like I'm, we're kind of an odd duck in the longevity space. We have com we have clients, we have a consumer business. That's weird, um, and it's a weird thing to explain um, to investors, and it's it's kind of a weird thing too because you're always like walking this. Um, you know, you're, you're doing something for potential, right? And so, uh, especially for me to be a scientist and talk about, this is a hedge, right? This is a tool in a toolkit. And so, um, it's, 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 you know, it, it, it's, a, it's always a struggle um, to, have a, to have a product that is, 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 is for sale. And it's, it's an interesting, I think, thing to like present something like that in this space. Um, and I'm trying to make good on that. Uh, the other thing I'd like to just talk about is that, uh, so, because we're, we're talking about investment, so when we came out of like Y Combinator, we met with a lot of VC, a lot of venture capitalists in the in the valley, and like, I was very naive. I thought they wanted to live longer, and um, <laughs> they, they they don't. They want to 10x their like LPs, you know, money, and um, you don't you do you don't, like as a founder, like I did myself a disservice, like thinking that they wanted like you know. They're like everybody else outside this building. I'm assuming everybody in here is like you know out of the France, but like they're that that they're like they're trying to get a high score. They're not trying to make the game longer, right? Um, and so it, it's it's I think that there's going to be quite some time in this space where that is going to be the measure of success. And ultimately, like unless you have like an LP, you have like you know some like you know advocate that's pushing like saying make me live longer and fund companies. They'll do that. Um, you really, you know, like you do yourself no, a disservice if you're not matching your like your Mrs. Plan and your mission together. But yeah. So anyway, I hope that was interesting for you, and thanks so much. <laughs>